It's a little piece that you might enjoy. It's where we look at our archive footage. Could be a horse race, could be a train or a driver. We just don't know. But we do know it is called In Case You Missed It. Throughout the years at Fraser Downs, they have played host to many of the top drivers and horsemen in the sport of harness racing. Among them, legendary driver, Hall of Fame driver, Ron Raples. A few years back, he was here. We had our cameras there for that memorable day. And in case you missed it. Yeah, really, I, I just, like I'm me. I, I, to me, uh, when I have a shave in the morning, look in the mirror, I'm just me. Nothing special, nothing better, nothing worse, you know. I just uh, happen to have some luck at doing something I love doing. So when the people come out, it's, it's really nice, uh, especially the kids. I mean, they got the best stories in the world. Uh, I was signing autographs at one of the racetracks back home, and uh, there's about two away from in front of me, and, the, and I heard the, the little girl say to her mother, you know, who asked her mother who I was, and she told the little girl that I was supposed to be famous, and the little girl said, well, I thought you had to be dead to be famous. <laughs> Drivers are born, they're not made. When Ronnie got his license, he had to qualify three horses to get your license at that time. He qualified three horses, or two, one of them twice, and the other one at least once, that were on the stewards list for making breaks. And this friend his owned them. Ronnie'd qualify them, the driver drove them, and they made a break and got back on the list, and he qualified them again next week. That's how he got his license. It's pure talent. That's right. It's been an unbelievable career I've had, and you know I couldn't thank enough people for being part of it. You know, you're only one uh, cog in a wheel. You know, it's a giant wheel, and you're only one spoke in that wheel, so you can't take much credit, really. You're just a part of it, that's all. Well, it was Ralph Hanover we win the Triple Crown that year. It was uh, not only such a great thrill to drive and, and be part of, my own part of them also. And I mean, it was just uh, an experience that uh, you would, couldn't be able to ex describe just how it was, really. It was just so great. One of your other notable horses when we talked earlier was, was the North American Cup. Yeah, those presidential ball went out. That was a big thrill because I'd, uh, you know, I was over uh, stable in New Jersey there for 10 years, and I'd come back to drive him there because Jack Moisey had to get hurt earlier in the year. I drove the horse five times, and he won five big stake races. I mean, he was just a, a grand horse to drive. He even made me look good. Now, one of the races that are probably most popular to the public is the Little Brown Jug. Now, what, what, what kind of feeling was that winning the jug? Well, in the harness racing, when you're a kid and you're growing up through it, uh, everybody wants to know, you know, who's going to win the jug this year, even more so than the Hamiltonian, just one of those things. And when, uh, you know, you're getting started in that, you don't think you'll ever, ever drive in it, never mind own one or have a chance of winning one. But So it just kind of it, it builds up inside you as you go along, and then all of a sudden it's uh, reality in front of you. You get a chance to drive one in it, and Ralph won. Uh, he was a favorite to win that year. It was, uh, you know, been more disappointed if he had not have won that year, but fake left was a complete surprise. Mickey McNichol was supposed to drive him. He got hurt earlier in the day. So I drove, filled in for him and drove him, and uh, the horse raced big that day, and I mean, it's just unbelievable. Will he be the first horse to win out of the two-hole trip? Around the turn, fake left, the leader. Western Hanover trying to be a triple crown winner on the outside. Crouch is third, eighth of a mile to go. Turn to toe, nose to nose. Western Hanover, fake left on the inside. Nose to nose to the wire. Here they are! Uh, everything just went my way that day. The Good Lord must have looked down on me and said, better give this fellow another treat, I guess, and uh, I won that one. So, I mean, just two spectacular days for me. So, Faye Cliff was a pickup drive. Yeah, I did. When I went to the Little Brown Jug that year, I didn't even have a mount. I just went there because I, I like going every year. It's a, a party time, a fun time, and I was just there. I was a victim of circumstances. Ron, when you do win a race like the Jug and Hamiltonian, like, is it the equivalent of like winning a derby where it helps a career? Well, I think it helps a career. I've never won the Derby, so I can't really say what the difference would be, but uh, any of those big races, are, they're such prestige races, and uh, it, to me, it's an honor just to drive in them, and if you just happen to be lucky enough to win one of them, I mean, that's, that's the greatest. And Billy Joe Jimbob is now on the outside fourth. No Sex Please is trying to close it out. Yeah, Charlie No Sex Please. Uh, my son, uh, Ronnie Jr., my oldest son, he bought him as a yearling, give 15000 for him. Brought the horse along no slow please. and uh, no sex, paid off in the long run. The, the horse just kept getting better and better. And when he won the Breeders' Crown that day, uh, that or even the Maple Leaf Trot, he went it uh, three times, I believe. And he was such a great horse to drive, and it, and it was so exciting for me because Ron Jr. owned him. Now, how far back do you and Ray go? Oh, not that long. We've known each other maybe no more than 35 years. 
40 years. <laughs> no, come on now, Greg. Come on. I was just a mere child. <laughs> 58, 59 is when we were in Montreal, not 68. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Run out of me, just a kid working for his cousin Keith in Montreal in, what, 58, 59 back there. And we've been friends ever since. There's a lot, a lot of friendship, isn't it? There is so. The old fellow said to me once, if you can have two good friends in your lifetime, you're lucky. True friends. Well, I think I'm awful lucky. I've had at least three, and he's one of them. I was hoping maybe I'd get a head start. I thought I'd get a head start. Like, uh, if you have personality like Ronnie, you can't help but do good, because if you're doing good with your own, right away, other trainers want you to drive for them, and it makes a big difference. And he has personality to burn. I always felt it was about 98% the horse and 2% the driver. Now, whether that's right or wrong, and there's lots of people that dispute that, I guess, but that's the way I always felt about it. I, through the years, I... Now, maybe I don't get as many winners. And I said to somebody the other day, I said, I, I never took much credit when all those horses were winning all those years, so I ain't going to take the blame now they're getting beat.